Welcome back to the New Cut Sports Podcast with your host, Niall Frazier, man. You know, I love saying it, but let's get right into what we need to get into, man. Um, Before we get started, I just want to take the time to shout out Jason Kelsey, man, the center from the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, played a good, what was it, 12, 13 years with us. Um, ended up retiring on Monday. I know I'm pretty late. Uh, and I don't, really, I don't really, be honest with you, I don't even like being early to the party because, you know, that's just not who I am. But my thing is this, we're going to get it in regardless. So, uh, shout out to Jason Kelsey, man. Um, Super Bowl winning. Probably going to go down to the Hall of Fame uh, up there in Canton, Ohio. So, uh, was that 2029? I think he's eligible. So, uh, he's probably a first round Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, and if you're not from Philly and you sitting there saying, why y'all celebrate, it's, we understand. Y'all don't win too many Super Bowls, so. <laughs> Neither do we, but we got one, you feel me? <laughs> so, yeah, man, but um, let's roll into what we need to roll into today. Um, if we could, or if y'all could, please like, comment, and subscribe to always catch this vibe. Um, as you know, we're just trying to grow the channel uh, to more and more, give you more of the best Eagles content. Phillies content. I know I said I was going to talk about the Sixers, but, and I should probably talk about the Sixers. I played basketball, so I knew that better than I know uh, baseball and uh, football, but uh, um, it's just Joel and B not playing. I don't want to get too far into that, but, you know, it might be his time to just, you know, not say move on, but it might be that time. So, but we're going to get into what we need to get into. Uh, first and foremost, shout out to the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I'm just, I'm just right now. I'm just really excited, man, um, with what's going on. I'm seeing these free agent prospects uh, going around the, uh, the NFL. A lot of uh, veteran, ah, excuse me, a lot of veteran players are being cut from their teams. Um, yesterday, I seen that uh, Poyer, um, Jordan Poyer, is how you say his last name. He used to he used to play for us, but then he ended up going to the Bills. Had a, a pretty, pretty good, a pretty, pretty decent career there. So. Um, you know, it's a lot of different pieces out there that I think how we can tackle. And I will, and I wanted to say this, like, I got a lot of respect, bro. I know I said this before. Um, and I know we all call, for, you know, people call for his job a few seasons ago. And I understand it. But one thing I got to give to this dude, a couple things I give to this dude, it's like, and I see the other content creators, you know, they're sitting there saying what they're saying because they feel like, you know, we should go get this player, we should go get that player. But one thing I will say about how, and I've said it before, is when how if how he makes a mistake, he's going to figure out a way to correct that and overly correct it. If that makes sense, he's going to figure out a way where, like, all right, like it don't happen again. And that's how we all should probably live our lives. But my thing is this: he really do live. He do live by that. When he said when he comes out, he sits there and says, "Yeah, I heard people say I'm not interested in the linebackers, or I don't like linebacker position, or uh, they don't like to do this. Uh, the, the, the Eagles don't do this the first round in the draft." I do think we're going to see a. a, a a 180. I think we're going to see a lot of different changes going on with our organization. Uh, just for the simple fact that last year being a historic uh, historic collapse, um, the way it ended, uh, and then how how we went out this offseason and retooled the coaching staff, getting, you know, of course, Vic Fangio, we already knew that was on uh, on the list. So, uh, from, from the year before, but when he became available, how we jumped on that, um, they feel that that's the defense that could win them more, you know, Super Bowls, I, I suppose. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, uh, defense. I'm not going to sit there and say I'm, I'm not – I don't like the defense, but I would have preferred a defense where we were utilizing like like a Hassan Reddick, which I'll get into a little bit later, but utilizing Hassan Reddick at the line, getting to the, to the quarterback and stuff like that. Um, that's how I always, you know – seen the Philadelphia Eagles uh, defense growing up with Jim Johnson and stuff like that. And then they transitioned to this more of a zone type, which they still can play man in certain, I guess, certain sets, whatever the case may be. But um, it's more of a zone defense. Um, and um, Vic Fangio likes to use his linebackers, you know, and, and drop them in the coverage most times. So uh, it's not – I don't. I ain't going to sit there and say it don't. I mean, because clearly it do work. But my thing is this. I would have preferred something different, but that's what we got. That's what Howie and the Eagles uh, organization and Jeffrey Lurie wanted. So that's what we're going to rock with. Um, but with that being said, certain players, certain players, uh, they, you needed certain coaches for these players because something else I had a problem with this year was also the development of our, of our, of our talent. Not to say we don't develop our talent, but look how many times we done, de we done, we done drafted players here 
did what we did with him, let him go somewhere else, and they do outstanding. They go get paid, which, which, which should be the case. But my thing is this. Why are we letting all this talent go? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to, you know, get into, you know, oh, T.J. Edwards just had the third. But, like, look at this situation now. We're trying to go back and go get Chauncey again. Chauncey, Chauncey Garner. Instead of just keeping him there from last year or from the year before. You know what I mean? It's like, and then we, and then you get to a kind of a bad, not a bad deal, but then you get into having to pay Bradbury that money for him to perform it the way he did this year. So with that being said, it's like it's so many different things that how we and you can't see everything, but it's so many different avenues to go down. But we don't really know what all, you know, until the time come, what what will transpire from that deal, that situation. Because I also said a lot of, about the one year deals as well. Don't get me wrong. Those are great to have because I do like the aggression that how he has in the off season, off seasons. But that one year deal stuff has to stop. We not has to stop. But the one-year deal thing should be where, like, say, like, like, scenario, say, you know, we're five games, six games into the season, and some one of our, you know, our key players gets hurt. Maybe you go out there, you go get a veteran player, like, uh, uh, if he's still a villain, like a Quadron, Quadron Diggs, whatever you call it, you know what I'm saying, or, or whatever the case may be, somebody that's older, like the Kevin Bayards and stuff like that, then you go out and go get somebody like that. You know what I mean? But I feel like we have a lot of talent. On the team already. When we sit here and we talk about the cornerbacks, I don't know why that's still floating around. Don't get me wrong. I really do want my man from uh, 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 Toledo. And I was saying this before. I had just I had just bought the PFF. And I was saying this. I'm like, I went through the grades. I'm like, dang, my man, he all right. But him not playing in a big division, you know, you don't get that kind of, you don't get that kind of, uh, you don't get them kind of looks. But his combine uh, mixed with the, uh, 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 the senior bowl solidified him. So, I mean, if you can go out and go get somebody like that, but then you still have Isaiah Rogers coming in, you still have uh, uh, Eli, you still got, you know, Bradbury and all them other guys, depending on what they do. And this is all, you know, I'm just sitting here talking about what's going on right now. Um, as y'all know, we still have, I mean, free agency just started. Uh, and then you got the draft too, so a lot of things can change. Um, but I do, I do have to give Howie his respect in that regard because, I mean, a lot of teams don't go out and go do what we do. But... But at the same time, we have to start looking at these positions. Like, can we get it? Can we get somebody in here for three, or four years at the at the safety? Can we get somebody in here for you know four or five years at the corner position so we can get some, I'm gonna say continuity or some 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 type of consistency consistency with at consistency with the players because I feel as though it's not enough. I feel like it's not enough uh, uh, of that. Um, so that's why I'm thinking how we brought it in. Well, not not brought it. No. no. How we bringing in these different coaches with this experience that they have, I think they're retooling to try to get back to that Super Bowl. Of course, that's the, the goal every year, but I really do feel like if they, if how we can ace this draft, and you don't never ace a draft, but if how we can get damn near close to getting the pieces that we need, I don't see why we can't go back to the Super Bowl. At least be a, at least be a playoff contender, of getting past more than the first round this year. So I know some, like I said, some changes. And it's going to be a lot, but I feel like that's why he brought those different coaches in there. And then now we're going to start to see what type of players he wants to go get. Is he going to go for them, them veteran players, like I said, that just were released? Or is he going to try to do a little? And he might mix. He, he, going to dip, he going to dibble and dabble, of course. You know what I mean? He might go get a you know a veteran player here You know that might, may not have to pay him too much money. And then go get somebody, you know, pay a star, whatever the case may be. So Tom's always going to tell with Howie. But one thing I will say, like I said, He's aggressive. He he wants to win. So I had to give Howie that in, 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 in high regard. Now moving on to my next point with Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick is a, is a, is getting to be a sticky situation because I feel like a lot of what we're trying to do in the draft and in free agency is going to, you know, is necessarily correlated to what he's going to do with his deal. Now he can possibly play out his deal. They can let him play out his deal for the last this last season and you know, whatever. But now I'm hearing things about Getting a second, like a package deal for Hassan Reddick, for like a second, uh, second round pick and um, maybe a third or a fifth round pick and then maybe a player or something like that. And to me, I hear a lot of content creators going around. And I was sitting there saying this to myself. I'm like, 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 man, come on, man, we gonna get rid of Hassan ten sacks. You know what I mean? But with that Fangio system, Hassan, and Hassan has said it himself, he doesn't like to be dropped back in the pass coverage. So to to pay a player top dollar. To, to play a position that he don't even want to be playing in to begin with it wouldn't even really make sense on the Eagles' part. Now, I love Hassan Reddick, don't get me wrong, but if you're looking at it on the business side, 
of the uh, business side of the uh, of the of the coin. It really don't make sense for the Eagles to give him all that money for, if they're going to let Vic Fangio drop him into uh, coverage. Now, can, now can he play in coverage? Of, of course. I'm not sitting there saying he can't. But what we get from Hassan Reddick, those ten sacks, is from him playing up on the line, going after that quarterback. It's not him playing in coverage. So, so with that being said, we're going to see how that transpires. But if we do end up trading, and it's, and it's crazy to say, but it's the scenario that was put out there. If they end up trading Hassan Reddick. A second round pick, I mean, it's cool, I guess. But my thing is this: say you say you dealing with a team like like the Broncos are trying to, they look like they're having a fire sale. So maybe you can go trade a, a Hassan Reddick for maybe a Patrick Sertain, or you go get a, a a wide receiver three in Cortland Sutton, or a, a something like that, or maybe a, a line, like who knows? I don't know. But my thing is this: I know how he's not going to, he's not leaving with his pants down. How are we gonna leave with something? Okay. He leaving up out of here with something, and it's something good. If it's a draft pick or whatever the case may be, but to be able to replace those ten sacks is going to be hard. I I have a lot of hope for our line. I have a lot of hope for Nolan Smith. Shout out the twin. He probably he's probably I didn't I haven't seen any recent pictures of him, but I know he's probably bulking up. He's a big dude, fast. I think he will thrive in this Vic Fangio system. Then you still got uh, Nicobe Dean coming off his injury. I don't. I think he's back in October. Not October, but he should be back. I don't know what the timetable is with him, but he should be back for the uh, for training camp and stuff like that. And then also, what you call it? Uh, uh, oh, I don't even. Know, I don't know if they're doing with Cunningham. I don't know if they're going to sign him back, but he's a free agent as well. Um, but he worked pretty well, and I don't know if and I, I heard how he say how he you know like utilizing him and things like that. But um. We're going to need to get some linebackers, man. Because if you get get rid of Hassan Reddick, like them ten them ten sacks is gone, and then Sweaty is up for a, a contract next year. You might lose him. So it's like, you know, what are we going to do? So we got to develop some of these players because you still got these. You know, we still got players that need to be developed, of course, and um, on both sides of the ball. But um, yeah, man. I think I think you know if it does come down to that. Um, I know, I know, I know. I seen somebody say that his uh, Hassan Reddick's trainer had came or tweeted something that he didn't want to leave Philadelphia, which is all good and dandy. But if somebody's going to offer you the money that you're looking for and the Eagles aren't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, I'm, you probably going to take the money. You know what I mean? So we'll see how that play, you know, how that plays out. But you know, I just think, I just think if they're going to trade Hassan Reddick, please, I, I can't believe we're even saying that, but please just get something good like. Like, 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 finagle somebody out of something. Like, go get a, a decent player or something like that. Even, like, um, and I'm not saying that, that would be a possibility, but, like, Calvin Ridley's out there. Now, I'm not sitting there saying the Eagles, he going to want a big contract. Eagles might not pay him. Might not, may not pay him. You know what I mean? May not pay him that money. But it's like, there's some, there's some stars out there where it's like, you know what I mean? You might be able to, and I think, I think, really, a free agent, excuse me, but there's some stars out there, but, uh, that you can trade for, so. You never know, man. Some teams, I see a lot of teams that I'm thinking like, oh, they probably not going to make no moves. They're like, they're unloading the team. Like, that's crazy. So, I know how we're just sitting back tooling his thumbs, but it's going to be a move that we are not going to be, even think about that how he's going to make. And then I was also watching, first off, shout out to Philly 500. Um, I was watching Philly 500 last night, and he, he always he always talks about having these dreams that sometimes they usually come true. But he said he had a dream, and I'm thinking about this because now Kellen Moore is coming from the Chargers. But he was sitting there talking about he had a dream about getting a defensive end. And it was either Nick Bosa. not Was it Nick Bosa? Nick Bosa the one that played for the Chargers? Whatever, one of the Bosa brothers that played for the Chargers or Khalil Mack. Now, I know y'all sitting there saying, like, oh, Khalil Mack, why is this, that, and the third? I hear what you're saying. But my thing is, will Khalil Mack be watched if he's sitting there playing with one of the best defensive lines in the league? You know what I'm saying? Your job gets to become a little bit easier. And that's what I was saying about Bradbury. Does Bradbury suck as bad? If you put a lot of, if you put great talent around him, you know what I mean. So it's like, it's like, it's a lot of, it's a lot that go into it that we could, you know, we could discuss. I could be on this joint for an hour just talking to y'all about the different scenarios, but I'm not going to do all that. I'm just sitting there saying, just be open minded to different, to different things because the ultimate goal is, you know, we don't want to see these team, you know, see these players leave this team, and vice versa. But my thing is, you got to retool each year because every year the NFL is changing. And if you feel like, you know, and that's what Howie always talks about. He wants to be ahead of the curve and not behind. Um, so you got to retool the team every every season. You might not want to see some players leave, but, it, you know, it, it just is what it is. If that if, if the player that's, that's coming in can be a better contributor than what we have, 
that's just what it's going to have to be. Or it just might be like, all right, maybe you don't got a star player like a Hassan Ruddick. But in that Fangio system, you can go get some, you know, some not lower tier, but, you know, some mid-tier linebackers and players to go play in that. And they might do fantastic, which is, which which can which can save us money in the long term. Then you can start extending, like, uh, 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 Smitty's and whatever the case may be and have some money left over. So there's a lot of different scenarios that the Eagles can 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 tackle uh, can attack this at, but I'm just looking at it like he going like how are we gonna really split this up? If he can't get what he because free agency is first. If he can't get what he's looking for a free agency, that draft's gonna be where he's gonna retool the team mostly. I feel as though so. Um, I'm hoping maybe you know big name linebacker or a big name safety. But my biggest thing is whoever we do go get, they need if Vic Fangio is gonna be here for the next couple of years. That's cool. Whatever the case may be. It needs to be players that fit that system, okay? If you can get a bargain deal on some of these players, then cool. Because, like, Chauncey's, Chauncey's like five, six, five, six million, I think. And he's 26. So, i definitely go back and go get Chauncey. Regardless of what he said about us, we always – we I, 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 and my whole thing is this. We be on this joint. I'll be on this joint talking crazy sometimes and all that. But then I'll get back. I'm a, I'm a man, man. I'll get back on here. I apologize. You know what I'm saying? They're saying because I'm in, in the heat of the moment, in the heat of battle, you know, some things – and it's nothing disrespectful. They just be like, bro, like with Bradbury this season, I know I said some things, and it's just like I got a lot of love for Bradbury. Don't get me wrong, but I gotta critique what I'm saying. I'm like, bro, like if somebody seen me doing something that was trash, you're gonna tell me I'm trash or I'm not playing well. So that's just a part of the game. That's where you gotta have that mental fortitude to be able to to uh push through. But with that being said, it's like, you know, we say a lot of crazy stuff, and players say a lot of crazy stuff, but that has nothing. That all can be patched up if you get back out on that field and you sit there and you tell me or you show me that you can go do what you did back in 2022 or whatever the case may be. So I'm not going to sit there and hold no grudge over no players and stuff like that. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. AOD, give me like five minutes, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm recording this video still. My fault. Yee -hee. But yeah, man. So, 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 so. So, so I forgot what I was sitting there saying. So, yeah. So with that, I, I'm, I'm just, I just want to see what, what, you know, what, what transpires from this, this draft. Um, now they did let go, uh, Maddox. Um, and I already had said that was probably coming because the best availability is, or uh, the best ability is availability, excuse me. And, um, he hasn't been available, man. He hasn't been, you know, he's a great player. Don't get me wrong. He's a great player, but he's just not available to play on the field. Now, with that being said, there's also been talks to restructure the contract and have him come back on a cheaper deal. I would do that. You know what I mean? Maybe for a backup, you know, whatever the case may be, if he can't stay healthy. Because, um, <clears throat> like, he is, like, top five, at least top ten in my, in my book, at least top five. So, at this moment in time. But you can't really say that if you if you don't play enough. So, it is what it is. It's all love. But they let, they let Maddox go. And, you know, it's, it's part of the game. We, we appreciate, you know, what he's done for us in the organization. But... Um, I think a lot, I mean, like a lot, a lot is, I feel like a lot is going to be on what Hassan Reddick does. Okay. Cause we know what Kelsey's going to do. We know Brandon Graham's probably coming back. Um, I've been hearing that, uh, uh Fletcher Cox might retire, um, th this off season. So it's going to be a new team. We're moving into a new era, a younger team. That's what we should be trying to shoot for. You know, more of a younger team to keep some of these players here, but at the same time, that costs money to keep some of these players here as well. So. Um, I'm trying to make sure I don't forget nothing else, but I just hope, I'm going to just say this. I just hope that, and I said it before, that Howie goes out here and he really retools this team to the point where we can make a run. Because I really do feel deep down, and I know I said this last, I really do feel if he gets this draft right, he gets, even if he don't get the draft right, but if he, go, if he goes out and gets the right players to fit the scheme, it should be no reason why we can't go back to the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. It should be no reason why. You're gonna sit there and talk about you know how Jalen looked this year or how the team looked. That I feel like that was a combination of different things. I feel like they're working that stuff out. But as an Eagles fan, I really do think if how we can hit on the free agency in the in the draft, getting some, you know, some 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 talent that's ready to play now. Oh, man, I'm telling you, it could be very scary for the NFC East, man. I'm telling y'all, because my thing is this. Giants, what are they going to do? All due respect, they're not really doing nothing. And we might be able to grab McKinney from them. So what are they really doing? You know what I mean? And I said that last, you're going to pay. Y'all going to pay Daniel Jones all that money to do what? Exactly. Not a damn thing. Same thing with the, uh, 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 with, with, uh, what you call it? With, um, the Redskins. Excuse my friend, the Commanders. 
I see what they're doing, but it's but that is it's going to take time for that to even become a oh we're a playoff winning team. It's going to take a year or two because they still can't get right. And then the Dallas Cowboys, it's always and there's no disrespect to, to Dallas, but my thing is it always they get like they ha always have the talent, but then when it gets time for them to ball out, they don't ball out. So my thing is, I feel like the Eagles have to do this again this coming year the best chance of making it out of getting the number one seed. And then going to the playoffs, whatever the case may be, and hopefully going back to the Super Bowl. Um, so we got to see what the rest of these teams do and how they retool because Houston's going to be a problem, man. If Houston gets Saquon Barkley or a crazy running back, they're going to be a problem in the AFC, man. They're going to be a problem. Um, of course, Patrick Mahomes is always going to be a problem. But um, there's some teams that are retooling and, 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 and not just us, but are retooling just trying to make a run too. So we got to make sure we don't get caught with our pants down. We make sure we make the right moves and stuff like that and go from there. So... With that being said, you already know it's your boy now from the No Cut Sports Podcast. Again, if you could, like, comment, and subscribe to Always Catch This Vibe, and I'll be sure to bring you more of the latest and greatest content of the Philadelphia sports. And also, be on the lookout for um for the Phillies. I'm probably going to go to opening day for the Phillies, but um I want to talk some more about um you know the Phillies and what I'm, what I'm seeing, what I'm hoping to see this coming season. Um, I've been watching the spring trainings and things like that, and I do like some of the players. I ain't going to lie. I do like some of the players that they got uh, in the, uh, I don't know if you want to say that. The, I, don't, I guess that wouldn't be considered the minor league. But some of these some of these younger players that they got. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, Rob can, you know, learn from what he learned, uh, uh, learn from what he did wrong last year and, and make, a, make a run back. But um, they got the Braves. I know they got the Braves winning our conference. Uh, not our conference, but our division. What is that? Oh, bird! A conference, however you say that, but the the NL the NLCS, however you say that, you got they got the Braves winning that joint again. But like I said, man, Braves don't never scare me. I'm sorry. All that hitting, all that hitting in the beginning of the season, mid season, when it's come time to play, you better be ready to play because that add a boy ain't work out this past season. Now we ain't get too far after that, but that add a boy didn't work out, and we definitely gonna have to bone if the Diamondbacks even remotely get close to us, we got a bone to pick with them. So. Be sure to look out for those for those Phillies the, the Phillies videos too because they coming back. But with that being said, man, I'm gonna holler at y'all, man. It's not from No Cut Sports Podcast. I'm out.